deeply uncomfortable. I feel like I'm being judged. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you're not here's, petting her. Here's the thing. It starts with Crystal, right? And then Steve, mm -hmm. and then a poop joins. And then oh, I, there, there it is. Before you know it, you have got a case of mutants in Masterminds Monday, and yes, you, there's no avoiding it. You're gonna have to deal with it for about an hour, and got then a raging case of mutants in Masterminds Monday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh! Take five. Um, sorry about the technical issues. Um, we are going to blame me because why not? Um, but uh, it looks to me like we are set. It looks like we were broadcasting to my personal page, which is fine because you know. And you could do what I do and blame the dog. Yes, it was a corgi's fault. <laughs> um, okay. Really, probably my cat. He's been sabotaging. That me. is the look of guilt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really is. It truly, it truly is. Um, She's ashamed. <sighs> I want to thank everybody for your patience um, and as well as our friends here, because with us, we have probably one of the most patient, kind, thoughtful, friendly, um, smart, um, well-bearded people that I have had the pleasure <laughs> to know. And, and that's just talking about this stream. And that's, yes, exactly. Um, we, we have a pook. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Apuk. Hi, Apuk. We hope this is the last time you have to introduce yourself. I yes. Love you, the, your I mean, we love you, Apuk, but I hope this is the last time I have to say hello to you this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I, I never get tired of saying hello to all of you guys. So Aww. hello again. I love it. You've got a perfect um, uh, uh, timber to your voice, and you were able to hit your marks every single time we did this, which I think was about 15. So uh, well done. <laughs> Uh, See that theatrical, that theater background, it went to something. Right, and the show must go on. And Are um, we all theater geeks? Are we oh, all? That would be wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we all are. Yeah. Because think, we're so practical. It <laughs> does not surprise me at all. Um, and we're all accustomed to doing it all over again. <laughs> over and over. True. I'm just glad now that we can, you know, uh, soak in the applause um, because that was the only missing component to this uh, Groundhog's Day of an event we're doing. Um, so, um, Apuk, you're here because you are a superstar online community leader. Um, you have created a, uh, a space wherein people can come uh, and enjoy themselves, uh, take some risk in playing, you know, um, uh, in developing their uh, tabletop role play skills and maybe you know, a lot of people who have done it for the first time, you're there to kind of help and you have a community of phenomenal people. Now you don't do it all by yourself, right? No, no, indeed not. I've got an amazing group of people. I have so many wonderful moderators that help me in our community and so many great GMs and players and just people who love meeting some masterminds and, you know, are enjoy being part of a good community of people. Speaking of a good community of people, um, uh, we have some folks who are hanging out um, in uh, chat. Do me a favor, uh, leave us a question if you've got some, and uh, and I will certainly. I love interrupting people, and I certainly love interrupting people to share your thoughts and your uh, feedback um, and questions and things. So definitely uh, do drop in. Um, I don't know why I say that every time. Like do drop in. I don't. It's not even part of my vernacular. But anyway. Um, oh, I just so, got that joke. I know, right? Yeah. So dumb. So dumb. I, I'm, I should be punished. Um, but <laughs> in addition to Apuk, we have Crystal Frazier. We have Steve Kenson. Luminaries. The, like, you own Monday. Monday is yours. <laughs> like, we can, have canceled. Can I have a better day? Can right? I have What's Monday's resale value look like? <laughs> not good. Not super <laughs> good. Well, I mean, it's gone up a bit now that you've sort of taken over the reins for Monday. Um, well, that's how it is. You know, the queers move in and, you know, clean everything <laughs> that's up. Right. And then, you know, property values go up. That's exactly <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And it really is Monday today. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's feeling well Monday. Um, uh, as far as folks that are hanging out, do we have, uh, let's see who we've got. Oh, look at this. We've got Brian Scott Bailey. That's great. Jay Gray. I was looking for you, my friend. I was like, where is our <laughs> lake wizard? Um, because I wasn't sure if I saw you last week, but then again, it's all one big long week. Um, I have no idea what month or day it is. Um, but did you, so I, you three have seen, and I was going to try to do a big sort of theatrical play of sorts. Um, our buddy, 
um, Alexander Thomas, right? Sorry, I'm having some kind of read a, that a little more stilted. You so funny. I'm not, I just kind of pulled it out of my brain. I actually remember wow. that. The page caught on something on the way out, though. It sure did. Yeah, I got a little tangled <laughs> up in like all the dumb stuff. Substitute teacher calling on a child who is not white. <laughs> right. Ooh, I had one of those teachers. His name was Mr. Cheeseman. And he was very, um, he was very stilted, like I just did. I was clearly performing. I'm glad you caught that. Um, that's not me just screwing up his name. Uh, but Mr. Cheeseman was awful and insisted to be called Mr. Cheeseman. But uh, we did not do that. Um, but Alexander put together something for us. We'd hope to debut in a, uh, uh, a, a more uh, sort of auspicious fashion, but we're going to share it. It is, um, I mean, we just can't avoid it. He put together an introductory trailer that we'll play before when we kind of get all of our uh, tech ducks in a row. Um, but I'm going to play it for everybody who's watching um, and let us know what you think as I kind of ramp up. Special preview. Special preview. Awesome. I'm pretty, pretty much in love with it. Um, now, are we going to heckle this like MST3K style or? Maybe we, um, what we'll do is uh, uh, we can heckle afterwards. Um, but uh, hold on here. Almost there. Thank you for holding. Hold, please. <laughs> and do, 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 do. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I saw it earlier today. Yeah, it's uh, it's beyond impressive, um, and that's why I'm making you savor the wait. <laughs> we are very good at technical. Ooh. Yeah, clearly. There we go. Clearly. All right, here we go. Kind of lost the music halfway through there. Oh, did we? Yeah, um, I heard it all the way through. Um, at so here's playing on your computer, Troy. Yeah, right. Um, Alex, this was. Yeah. I mean, it is. It still exists as an amazing <laughs> thing. Um, yeah, it's thank gorgeous. You. Yeah, it absolutely. Is. I, I gotta I, say, I just... met Crystal Fraser. She wishes her hips looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> I especially like the the not sufficiently the same in order for legal purposes, but still kind of scrolling comic book background, you know, right. <laughs> that is, you know, not that much like the opening of Marvel movies, but, no, you know. But definitely Marvel less. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we're we're going to um, get that uploaded to YouTube um, so folks can check it out. Uh, but Alex, uh, thank you so much. It's stuff like that just really, you know, uh, reminds us that we're just kind of a big group of nerds hanging out together, like nerd <laughs> family. And uh, we really, really appreciate it. We absolutely do. Um, thank you. That's yes. amazing. Hugely. Um, so, Apuk, you created a, um, as everybody knows, because I've walked them through it about 50,000 times on every single stream, at least three or four times, because I'm a huge fan of the work that you do, and you are yeah. a phenomenal. Spell it out, Troy. <laughs> You're so good. Um, talk to me about what you did and, and why you did it, and, um, and then we can kind of take it to its, uh, walk it all the way to Gen Con and beyond. Okay, great. Um, well, a few years ago, I was sitting around i was like you know the the people in my home group aren't aren't too interested in playing uh superhero games and i really really want to so maybe i'll like make a server to find a couple people to play some mutants and masterminds with and uh i was i was expecting i, I might you know maybe get a dozen or so people 
on the server <laughs> and um three a little over three years later now we have over 1500 people on the server it was absolutely not intentional uh it wasn't intended that it would be an entity like it is today i mean but the what good I, news is you did get a dozen people I, yeah. yes yes i i did get at least a dozen people who wanted to play mutants and masterminds <laughs> with me which was great um but uh yeah it just kept evolving and evolving i realized pretty quickly that there were almost no um outlets or hubs for people for mutants and masterminds like they were like there were for other games um and so i just decided to sort of step into the breach that was there and and sort of fulfill a need and um it turned out to be qu quite the need which was great um we've just gotten more and more people we show we've shown so many people the game uh we've shown so many people mutants and masterminds who had either just heard of it and didn't really have anyone to try it with or people who have gotten into you know younger people who um, are just getting into gaming. They may have only had, a, like, say, Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition as mm -hmm. their exposure, uh, but they love the Marvel movies and comic books. They wanted to see what else was out there. And so we've been able to show so many people Mutants and Masterminds. It's like their first not D&D &D game, too, which was kind of cool. That's very cool. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been just an amazing experience. It's been a crazy ride. Um, but uh, at this point, we've got an amazing community of people. I have so many wonderful moderators that help me help the community thrive and, um, and exist. So many great GMs and players who are running games all the time. And it's just a great experience, really. Mm -hmm. you know, how, many, oh, go ahead. how many games are running on the server these days? You know, that's a good question. We probably average between three and five games a week um with all with different gms mm -hmm. um you know i would say we probably got close to a close to a dozen gms that run games and maybe two or three times that number of regular players the gms also being players mm -hmm. um that run that playing games regularly and then you know we've got lots of people who come in for just you know one or two games and that kind of stuff but it's also very social there's always something going on people having conversations and one of the things that i love about mutants and masterminds and it's a universal thing everybody loves creating superheroes so you just kind of go through the process mm -hmm. they absolutely love it and the world and the mechanisms really lends itself very well to that but it's it's one of the things that i enjoyed sort of just watching people do and they get some of the best ideas that are just wild, wildly, out, you know, kind of um, outlandish, but so doable within the Mutants and Masterminds framework. What's so interesting, I think, about the superhero genre of gaming is, well, a couple of things. One, that it's usually set in our current contemporary world. Um, mm -hmm. So in, in many ways, it's a lot more relatable for people um, than perhaps another fantastical or far future sort of setting. Um, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to, to understand the issues of a day-to-day -day modern person, you know, both practically and psychologically, emotionally. Um, then I think also superheroes, at least for me, allow, allow people to reach out into the world in a way they wish they could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I know for me, a lot, not all, but a lot of the characters I create for Mutants and Masterminds represent um, something I would like to do to try to fix the world's problems that I don't have the ability to do personally, mm -hmm. or I don't think I have the ability to do, at least not in the way they do. Um, and so for me, a lot of ways it's an outlet when I feel especially you know, upset or helpless to fix something in the world. I can make a superhero who is able to fix those things. And mm -hmm. for, that's one of the things that's that I love about it so much as an outlet. Yeah, that's a theme we've talked about on here a couple of times. Yeah. Absolutely, I'm uh, checking the chat. Um, you know, uh, uh, something about what you do, my friend, just your existence. Um, everybody's just, uh, uh, Raina would like to let you know that, you know, it's, um, we were in far more than three to four games a week. <laughs> Our poop selling is short. Um, 
Uh, but ev like you've got a you've got a fan base here of people that just truly appreciate what you do, and it's I think that part of why I'm so apt to reflect on what you do and what you know uh, our friend Foxfire does, and uh, you know these communities, um, you, gaming communities can get really toxic, and they can turn mm -hmm. into yeah. this space of just sort of the mutual abuse and there's something about green ronin games and and culture that expects a bit more but we you know before uh we connected how did did you come to like conventions or did like did you have a, a connection with the team prior or did that was that a newer kind of occurrence or a, um do you mean like uh, the, you're on our pod, you know, like a podcast or you're on our stream, you know, we're, we're, we're collaborating on events. And um, my, my question really is, did you look to what Green Ronin does? Like, you know, we're, we are, um, we care a lot about what goes on in the world on a global sense. We, we uh, create, you know, um, fundraisers and things on our own and then participate on top of that in, you know, in, in sort of just trying to be good citizens of the world. And when I look to your group, it really embodies the things that are important to us. Um, I'm wondering like what came first, the kindness or the, you know, gratitude, like how did that work out? Um. Well, when I realized that this wasn't going to be just a place for me to meet a couple of people to play games with, yeah. when I realized that there was, it was going to be something bigger than that, there was kind of a moment where I felt like I had to make a, a conscious decision to do that or not do that. Because mm -hmm. for me, that involves a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Um, when it comes to making sure it's a positive place for people to be. And especially with the way things have become, or maybe the way things have been revealed to be, I guess is the, a better mm -hmm. way to Apt. say it. Yeah. Um, there, I think there needs to be people who make active choices to have a supportive community uh, and an inclusive community. Mm -hmm. And um, since there are obviously people making active choices for the exact opposite. Um, yeah. And so I, when I decided that I was going to do this in a real way, um, I made the commitment that it was going to be a positive place. It wasn't going to be home for toxicity or bigotry of any kind. Um, and, you know, to be honest, those are the, those have been the most, um, both difficult and important challenges that I've faced running the server is, mm -hmm. you know, there's, it's a place where everyone is meant to feel welcome, regardless of what they think or who they are or what they feel. But the overarching philosophy is that everyone has to stay respectful and positive in their interactions with people. Um, and, you know, sometimes it gets to a point where you have to, you know, talk to people about the things that they're doing in a way that is hopefully positive and hopefully mm -hmm. leads them to a better place or conclusion or at least way of behaving yeah. around other people. And when they, when they don't, it's very difficult to say, well, you know, for me anyway, it's difficult for me to say, I'm sorry, the toxicity that you're bringing to the community is, uh, you know, outweighing your contributions and we'd like you to please go. Mm -hmm. But but you have to, I think, you have to be willing to do that if you're going to build a positive community like this. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to take a stand for the people in your community. And it's almost more difficult to, I won't, I won't say rehabilitate, but to, you know, there, there is sort of this this concept out there in the world of kind of restorative justice where you you learn how to you learn what is inappropriate in a process that doesn't yeet you into the sun but you're actually mm -hmm. able to you know learn and and be welcomed still um you know it, it i hear you that it can be hard to kind of drop the hammer sometimes but you look at by and large communities online communities especially look mm -hmm. to membership and connection as a little bit throwaway these are temporary little spaces but you've built uh uh a home for people like people really feel mm -hmm. safe and they're in their creativity and uh, i'm you know again i tell you i'm looking at the the chat and um you know the 
you've just done a really good thing. And I think that that's why I keep coming back to like, let's talk about the stuff. And also you're just a joy to hang out with. Like, I mean, you know, in addition <laughs> to just being a huge, you know, supporter of, of doing the, th you're on the right side of, you know, like you're, you're, you're counterbalancing those people that want to make the world spin backwards, but you're also funny. Uh, you're a great GM. Um, and, uh, and you're willing to do all this weird stuff. I ask you, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> That's a quality Troy really likes. It, it really, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm like, so what do you think about this weird thing? Or how about that weird thing? You're, you're totally down for it. And I really, really appreciate that. You're not so, open-minded to the, to the weird experiences in life and you're closing yourself off. That's so true. In the event that folks are, in some, for some strange reason, not familiar with the server um, up hook, where would, they, where would they find it? And how do they get involved? Oh, great. Um, the name of the server is uh, the, Freedom, the Freedom City server, um, Mutants and Mastermind server. Um, and um, I believe our link master um, has, got, has got our, a link to that. And um, mm -hmm. we also have an, an associated Obsidian portal page uh, for the community that um, has all of our like house rules and a place for people to post their characters and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and there's also, a lot of you know, other things. They do a lot of stuff there, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we do, um, we keep a yeah, record of all the vetted characters there. And there's also a calendar for the GMs to put up all their games and uh, a place for our house rules to be posted and stuff like that. Yep. Ooh, house rules. Yes, yes, indeed, our house <laughs> rules. What are the house How rules? How could you improve on perfection? Um, <laughs> well, actually, um, that's, that's the house <laughs> rules. Uh, my dog is speaking. Um, the, the house rules are uh, actually one of those things that is uh, on, shall we say, continuously vigorously discussed in the GM channel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But um, being... We should well, definitely do an episode on house rules sometime soon. Yes, <laughs> that would absolutely. Be great. That's a great that, idea. That would be, that would be great. I, I have a lot to talk about that and the, the design philosophy from Into Masterminds and how in my opinion, it requires every group to have some good house rules. Well, what do you um, and I think it's a good thing, a positive thing. Mm -hmm. I, I just bit. maintain that presence needs to be an attack attribute. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think specifically talking about house rules, uh, one thing that I guess I should mention is our server it started as just a place for people to get together and talk about meets and masterminds originally. You know, we had like help channels about rules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a while, enough people expressed an interest to start having games be hosted in the server. And so we did that for a while and it started happening enough that we decided to develop our own shared gaming world. Like um, people call them like a West Marches style game or like mm -hmm. an organized play sort, nice. of, sort of thing. Yeah, we call that the freedom verse. And um, it's, uh, we use the, the Earth Prime setting as our, as our mm -hmm. setting for it. Um, Primarily because we we decided to do that because we wanted it to be a gateway for new players who are coming into the system. And so like, mm -hmm. this is the system that they've read about in the books, the place that they've read about in the books, the setting. So right. that's, that's why we use that one. Plus we didn't have to do all the time to make up our own setting, of course. <laughs> um, but when it comes to house rules though, because we are a, um, a shared world with many different GMs mm -hmm. running different games and stuff, but in a shared universe uh, story-wise with the same characters and adventures happening in the same place. We do um, have a set of house rules that are specific to the fact that we are a place with lots of different GMs and players and ideas and stuff. And it can be difficult sometimes because the GMs are the ones who vote on those things and sometimes people have different ideas about it, but the house rules we have exist to allow online gaming together in a more streaming and easy way. Mm -hmm. A lot of the more complicated yeah. and difficult powers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like things like summoning and stuff like that, that put a lot of extra time on the board. Those are scaled back or some of them mm -hmm. even like variable and stuff like that are, yeah. you know, sc scaled back a lot in the server just because it makes it a lot easier for the GMs. And, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the, some of the house rules we use, I, would, I don't use in my own games because mm -hmm. of, partially because the people in my own games are people I know. And so it's, you know, we have, you know, we have a rapport and that kind of thing, but. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of what you're talking about sounds like exactly the kinds of rules changes you see in any system for organized play, like Pathfinder mm -hmm. Society, D&D mm -hmm. Adventurers League. 
Yeah, mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, I was thinking much the same thing of of the modifications in Basic Heroes Handbook. You know, yeah, as far as exactly. that went. Yeah, because there are lots of things that, again, I, I like this I, philosophy in the game that there are lots of powers that almost write the power. It says, you maybe shouldn't let players have this power, <laughs> mm -hmm. or if you do, yeah. you should be really aware of its capabilities. Or very, um, very limit its applications. Right. <laughs> We're including this because it's part of superheroes. But in a game, it's like maybe a little mm. difficult to, to deal with. Yeah, like some. But I love that because it allows people. It allows a GM who is comfortable with those complex rules to be like, all right, bring it on. We can mm -hmm. have a crazy like teleporting summoner, you know, yep. in, our, in our game, you know, or whatever. But um, yeah. Plus, yeah. one of my absolute mm -hmm. favorite character concepts is a duplicator, oh, like mm -hmm. multiple mad triplicate girl. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Pain in the ass for the GMs. So. Oh god, <laughs> can be. You have to put limits on it. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, the Time Traveler's Codex is, you know, an example of, you know, just like taking one of those powers and basically, you know, spending an entire chapter talking about, you know, well, who has this power and who has control of it and exactly what can you do with it? Yes. Yes, exactly. Well, so one of the things I enjoy too is, and this is just sort of a universal thing that people who are passionate about um, tabletop role play, they kind of graduate into sort of uh, where they lead, you know, their own adventures and they certainly play, but you put together uh, an adventure for, um, that I played in, I wouldn't say you put it together for me, but you put it and we, uh, how there was three of us and you, um, how was it like about a month, just straight, just every single day, 24 hours a day, we played this game, <laughs> this adventure. <laughs> Um, but um, I really, I really enjoyed myself, and it was uh, a great opportunity to get to know um, folks. But it was just a, it was, it was a great refresher because I hadn't really touched Mutants and Masterminds since Second Edition. Um, and so, talk to me a bit about that, and then let's talk about like bringing it as then stepping in and being a freebooter, and, and you know, you as a, a tabletop role play superhero royalty <laughs> ended up having a session with somebody who has video game superhero royalty, but I won't spoil it. Um, oh my goodness. Yes. It's, it's, it's true. Um, I designed that adventure specifically to be um, an adventure that was, had a lot of really good elements in the game to be sort of like an intro game for, for new players. Yeah. Um, and uh, to, yeah, just to be something that introduced them to a lot of the, fun things that you can do with mutants and masterminds and also i built that one specifically to showcase a lot of the capabilities of roll 20 mm -hmm. uh with like its uh animation capabilities and music capabilities and stuff like that and dynamic lighting because um i i'm a i love roll 20 i think it's it's my preferred format for playing for doing any kind of gaming online um and uh so yeah i i designed that adventure specifically to work on roll 20 um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Troy was my was my first guinea pig. He and his group um, when I was uh, when I was test playing it before running it at Gen Con. He and he and his group got to be uh, the, the first test group. Yeah, it was a blast. Now um, I, I'm for some reason I am blanking on how we all got together, um, how we managed because I know I, we talked about kind of doing this and and you were very patient and you were like, how about today or how about soon and you know, life uh, is, is uh, crazy, especially if you're, you know, working in the space that we're in. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. And did you, did you end up tweaking or changing anything? For me, it felt like the perfect sort of onboarding experience. And we had so much fun. We were just a bunch of jokers and, you know, really enjoying ourselves and took some of that character creation to heart. Um, that was the one thing I was really, I wanted to get it right. And you kind of helped me through that process. And uh, I ended up making an interesting character that had to get punched to be able to punch, <laughs> which was, it was interesting, but it was, sort of, you know, I, I like the, the counterbalance there, but um, from when you ran it for us and then you took it to Gen Con, did you make some tweaks or anything um, or was it perfection? Oh yeah, no, I, I definitely, I definitely did. Um, but it was just tweaking little stuff like, um, you know, mainly stuff about flow and, um, I, like I mentioned last week with my question about getting people from one scene to another in a logical format, um, getting the uh, scenes to flow together 
in a way that made sense uh, that didn't that didn't require me just being all right now you guys go here um, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh that's always a challenge yes um but so i'm always working on that and also um in my games i use uh a lot of skill challenges i always put at least one skill challenge in every adventure that <sighs> i make and <laughs> some people some people have very negative feelings about skill challenges oh. i love skill challenges i think they're like the most innovative thing to hit gaming since the d20 um, because they can encapsulate any conflict that isn't direct fighting. Mm -hmm. It's so versatile. I, I, just, I, can't, I, I can't say them. enough about them. Yeah, I, love I love the love fact that, that you use them for your traps in the GM book. It's <laughs> like, it's like, ah, oh, these are skill challenge rules. I recognize these for the death traps. Um, <laughs> but it was mainly uh, honing those up and making those um, a bit more uh, effective. And I, I often use those to do that flow thing. Like, ah, at the end of the skill challenge, you know you have to go to this place to uh to get there so yeah and so how was your you know the first gen con um online uh you were fortunate we were fortunate to have you kind of uh helping us out with that um and we boy we made it into gen con by the skin of our teeth that was tight <laughs> but it worked out you ran how many games uh i ran two games and then uh, two other gms from our server also each ran two games too mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk to me about, uh, talk to me about that experience and, um, and, you know, and how, it, how it went with your, your visiting dignitary from the digital side of the superhero oh my, world. Yeah. My goodness. This was quite a surprise. Um, the, the first game went, went really well. We had, we had a, tons of fun. Gen, Gen Con was, was a wild experience because this was actually my planning back, back before, um, uh, COVID happened was this was actually going to be my first Gen Con Gen Con. Um, I was going to go for the first time because um, uh, I live way up in Maine. So Indianapolis is quite the distance from where I live. Yeah. Um, a, but uh, I was going to go for the first girl time. From another peninsula, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and I was going to free boot for you guys over there. But um, then, uh, then this happened. And actually, I, w I was kind of psyched because it allowed me to. Um, make this adventure on Roll Twenty. It gave me the upper, sort of the impetus to sort of do it. Um, but the the second day was was also also went great. But there was a visiting dignitary in that game, um, which I wouldn't have even known if Troy had told me. So like he spiked my anxiety <laughs> level for the for the game. Thanks, Troy. That's yeah, what I'm here but, for. <laughs> uh, but uh, the guy, the the person we're talking about was Jack Emmer, and he is like basically like what the creator or one of the creators of city of heroes mm -hmm. and has worked for like so yeah, many different yeah. like mmos that i've played he's worked for he's 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 worked on just about every superhero mmo the marvel one the dc <laughs> one mm -hmm. um and he uh just recently stepped down from running the star trek online one he he developed that from the get-go and had a good, it's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, he's still running, uh, but uh, no, Jack is a, definitely a luminary. And, and I know Jack because of his connection with a studio that I used to work with, <clears throat> but he's a Gen Con staple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always there. I did notice that he cut his hair, though. He used to have very luxurious hair. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He played he a speedster. Did he? Okay, well, so mm -hmm. that's the question. How did, how did it go? Did he know that you knew that he knew that you knew? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't say anything. I didn't want to put any kind of uh, pressure like that on him. You know, honestly, I felt really, really honored to be able to entertain him for four or five hours, considered the literally hundreds of hours of entertainment, the stuff that he's worked on has have given me. So um, I was really just really psyched to do that. Well, and he signed right up real fast because I, I saw his name and I was like, hey, just thought I'd let you know. Don't get nervous, but it's Jack Emmert. Right. Not he killed a guy. No, he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, I, I love that. And, uh, you know, we, we've kind of touched on, you know, when we're sharing, there's so much to talk about in the tabletop role play space. And I know that when we look at, you know, the people that are um, that are hanging out with us, you know, we're we're certainly fresh human like we're just good and we're you know smart and funny and all that stuff but we've been around a while um and i there's something about uh making things accessible to the to the new player that i can relate to because i am simple and easily confused and so i can often stand <laughs> in for the new person 
because of my simplicity. Um, and, uh, and I just think that that's something that's really, uh, it was funny because when I first looked at Mutants Masterminds and sort of talking about, you know, uh, all the pieces, it, it, uh, I think people get a mistaken impression that it is daunting. It, it's, it's a space you've got to think about it and learn it and you got to, you know, kind of understand what it's all about, but it's, it's not daunting. It's not as daunting as one might, think or have as you know rumored by some you know some of our uh folks who you know the thing that's interesting is tabletop uh playing tabletop stuff like uh virtual tabletop uh services um uh steve we were talking about one earlier this morning um that was fantasy grounds right yep yeah yeah and now uh and they've had they my understanding is they've come out with some um supporting content as well uh, yes, that is my understanding as well, that Fantasy Grounds has rolled out a bunch of Mutants and Masterminds support and content. Nice. Yeah, and we're, we're all in on virtual tabletop stuff, and oh, as yeah, Pook said, Roll20 is, is, is you know, something that he's involved in, and as a matter of fact, he's so involved in it that uh, he, you know, he's been sort of like, hey, what about that character sheet? Hey, what about that character sheet? So, um, Apook, do you want to talk a little bit about um, that project? the character sheet project for roll 20 sure sure yeah um the um the character sheet that's on roll 20 was created originally just by community members uh, not ours uh, in the, quite a while ago mm -hmm. um then once we started getting our community organized with a lot of people we started talking about oh you know we wish the character sheet was like a little bit more um just a little bit uh, more robust, I guess. Um, and uh, so a couple members of our community, uh, including uh, one of our moderators at the time, Findal, who's a great guy, he uh, worked on, um, he actually worked on the character sheet a little bit and improved it significantly, I thought. Um, but there's some, there's some other things I would like to see that could improve that sheet without redesigning a whole brand new one. And so um, for a while now, we've had people in the server who come you know, who have some CSS skills who want to help out with stuff. But um, recently, Troy hooked us up um, with your um, tech and operations wizard, Evan. And he mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. hopefully going to, um, we're going to start talking and hopefully he's going to help me get some more uh, changes and improvements on the character sheet happening pretty Thanks soon. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Awesome. Yeah, I'm psyched yeah. about it. No pressure, Evan. <laughs> no, yeah, you know, and that, that's the thing too. I think uh, sitting down and kind of talking and 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 having this, uh, you know, um, dialogue about how to make things better in that space, uh, it's really valuable to us, and it's good to hear, and we get context and can kind of do those things. Uh, I want to remind everybody who's hanging out. Um, there are. Uh, uh, two luminaries of the industry and the owners of Monday um, uh, from dusk till dawn. And then Apuk uh, is here as well. So if you've got questions, do feel free to share. I'm, I'm looking at some of these. Um, yeah, Jack, uh, Jack Emmert is just, he's, he is kind of um, the unofficial mascot of Gen Con. Uh, it looks like everybody's had, uh, you know, the opportunity to run games with him and, and, uh, and that's fantastic. I mean, you know, uh, he definitely, that's how I knew he was there. And that was like, you know, 11 billion years ago. Um, so I'm looking at our notes. Um, what do we have coming up that we can, um, you know, kind of uh, share and, and talk about? Did we, um, let's see, sorry. Before, before we get into that, could I ask a question? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's, there's something I've been wanting to ask Steve actually for a long time. Um, and that's because I think, in my opinion, the complication hero point system in uh, Mutants and Masterminds is really, really brilliant. And f for me, I think it's, it's really great because I think it's one of the most just really elegant ways I've ever seen for somebody to systemize good role playing, mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense. The last time I saw somebody before sort of the more modern era of games with a lot of different ideas that are out there now, but the last mm -hmm. time I saw uh, an interesting idea for experience like that was the old Palladium games. You guys remember the uh, old, they had a list of different things that would give you lots of experience, like having a good idea that worked, oh, having a good mm -hmm. idea that didn't mm -hmm. work, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I, a I, Palladium expert. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I was just wondering what the inspiration for the creation of that system was, because like I said, of all the things that are great about means and masterminds, I think that one's the most kind of innovative. Oh, and so you. I've always been curious about that. 
Um, well, initially, Hero Points was just uh, a, a thing to sort of address the the general kind of randomness of a D twenty based game. Um, you know, because it, you know, because the D twenty is a is a flat series of results. Um, there needed to be a little something to avoid the the you know sort of whiff factor of you know, characters missing or just botching a really important role or something like that. And so uh, in the first edition of Mutants and Masterminds, it was just a, a pool of points that you got, you know, in order to, you know, do cool stuff, basically. Um, but the more I played, um, the more I ran Mutants and Masterminds games um, with my own group and at conventions and other events and things like that, um, the more I saw that um, one of the sort of unexpected or, you know, sort of unexpected side effects of, of giving the players all the hero points in a big lump sum up front was that it had sort of the reverse effect that I wanted it to have um, in that it gave them a bunch of resources they started the game with um, and players um, oftentimes would, would burn through them you know, like really quickly to begin with. Um, and then when you got to the big sort of climatic part of the adventure, they didn't have any left. Um, and um, so I was like, so we need to change it around so that it's an accumulating resource rather than a, you know, a diminishing resource uh, so far as it went. And so um, when we did that, um, it became a question of, well, how does it accumulate and what do you get hero points for? Um, and that led to the notion of, of tying in the um, complications and things like that in the style of like karma from the old Marvel superheroes game and hero points in DC heroes uh, and things like that, where you got awards for your subplots and your complications and um, you know, for doing heroic stuff and all of that. And so it made it into an accumulating resource instead of a, a diminishing resource um, and that that has pretty much stuck around since second edition. So, um, and is, is, a, is definitely more in the, the sort of style of a comic book story where the characters start out with, you know, limited resources and end with having some, you know, additional things to help them do cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, our fantastic GM in our server lass is the absolute queen of using your complications against you. <laughs> Always great and for great stories. Cool. Well, thanks. I've I've always been curious about that. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, my pleasure. Uh, hey, um, before we, I uh, dive into some of these questions, um, and I, I'm watching folks, so don't uh, don't feel like I'm ignoring you. Um, I'm only half ignoring you. Uh, the uh, Apu, do you have you know? So this is a uh, a for someone who loves um, mutants and masterminds. You were literally on stream with. The mutants and the mastermind. Um, I'll leave it to you to decide which is which. Uh, but do you have other questions uh, or things that uh, that you just sort of thought about um, as you as you kind of built this community around uh, uh, you know around this game? Um, just that I think because it's um, a game about superheroes, I think it, in, it I think it engenders a, a positive community and a positive aspect to the community more than um a game another game might Ooh. yeah i mean one of the things i think you made it a great point in terms of uh, the the notion that one of the sort of motivating factors of superhero role-playing games is that the opportunity of just being able to make a difference being able to help yeah. absolutely uh, as far as that goes. So I do think that it, it both, it, in addition to being, you know, a great sort of game experience, I think it engenders pretty positive communities. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, I think that's one of the, one of the great things about it. Checking out some of the um, folks on and chat. Um, Rain, uh, Raina says, I, I love when my players use the hero points uh, to edit the scene and challenge my improv skills. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> spoken right. like it. Yeah. Um, but see, you know, one of the things I enjoy about, uh, and I, I, it just sticks in my mind as uh, it kind of 
jarred me and then I got back into this, you know, into the uh, game that we were playing, but you would say, oh, that was great. Now tell us what you did. Mm-hmm. It was, mm-hmm. you know, it was uh, like, you know, the, you just did an epic thing. How epic was it? And uh, at first it was sort of a, like, oh, okay, well, I, I guess I do <laughs> kind of sort of a spin and a, and a poke and a, a, you know, and I end in a, you know, shuffle ball, whatever. And, uh, but then after a while you kind of get into it. Um, what are some other things that you bring to the table like that? Like, what are some of your, what are the tricks that you have in your bag of tricks? Oh, I like, um, go, go ahead. right ahead. I was just going to say, I like actually along those lines, getting players to encourage their character, describe their character's failures. Mm-hmm. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Um, because they'll, yeah, often, they'll often make them much worse than I would <laughs> uh, as far as that goes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, I think that's part of it. Anything you can do to really enhance the feeling of a, of a comic book adventure experience, mm-hmm. I think is, is what you should do. Like that, like you, like you were just saying, especially when, when someone like, you know, does a really awesome thing or rolls really well against a villain or a bad guy. And always when they take the final bad guy out, I always want people to really give me a nice juicy description of <laughs> what that would look like in the comic back comic book panel, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, is that like a one page thing or was that like a two page spread thing? And what does that look like? You know, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that sort of stuff really enhances the experience, I think. It's great. I mean, it's one of the things that I love about the whole tabletop role play community. I mean, seriously, world-class storytellers, um, not just charged to tell a story, but to incorporate the people that are with you into that story in a deep way. And that really, it really hooked me. It's just a, it's a really interesting, soft kind of nudge into the, into the mix. And, uh, and I, I really enjoyed that. And things did get pretty graphic there towards the end. Um, I do recall that and I apologize. Um, we, have, <laughs> we have a question from um, Raina. Raina says, um, Raina, I know you said something and it was, we have a lot of people chatting. Um, right. Do, 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 do. Uh, when it comes to, um, did I steal your question, Raina? I, so Raina said this. So here's, a, it was funny, I didn't even see it, but Raina says, here's a question for a Poog meeting and playing with so many new GMs. What sort of tricks and skills have you picked up? Are there things that you have been inspired by as you, as you sort of work and live and, and kind of, uh, um, you know, learn in a in this space where it's a bunch of experts, a bunch of really talented people. Um, what are some Definitely. great ideas that you've stolen? Oh, so many. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, like I was saying before, um, the, uh, the GM I was referring to last is really, really a great GM uh, for the character elements in the story. Um, the story elements and, and really weaving them into the character's complications and getting them really getting those complications involved in the story that she already had conceived and, and written. And that's something that um, I just frankly am not as good at, in my opinion, as a GM um, and something I always learn from her when I'm in her games um, about getting those elements more lean. I'm sort of like more big picture and, creating situations and scenarios and scenes. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm someone who likes to use maps and use the maps to set the scene and that kind of stuff. And so that's, that's usually where my focus is first. And like she is a GM, I, I think more starts with those story and character elements and then builds the adventure out from there. And so it's interesting to see the different things, different GMs focus on and the things because they focus on that they're either better at or, you know, not mm-hmm. as strong at or don't focus on as much. I, I yeah. learn something every time I play with another GM and with my other players too. For the record, Sean Vieira says, um, uh, so want time of crisis for Fantasy Grounds. Love that adventure. I wanted to get that on the record. Owen says, oh, Crystal remembers Palladium. Um, it seemed a little <laughs> ominous. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um Character balance, pshaw. Oh, Raina says, oh, I'm getting such nice compliments. It sounds like very well earned. Um, just another, you know, that's what I love about online communities as well. And just communities in general is that, you know, you need a, you need a kind of a, a, a friendly, you know, a, a pook to kind of keep things uh, um, kind of moving along. But man, it takes a lot of people, a lot of people to, to mm-hmm. you know, moving in the right direction. Um, 
I'm looking at here. Oh, I see. Yes, Jonesy is more commenting on you know uh, uh, traversing maps and the like. Um, I have a um, uh, a question for all three of you. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to these kinds of opportunities and events, and and, and do you is there are there opportunities to co-GM and guest NPC. And I've, I've heard, I've seen that happen once in a while. I've, I've heard it has happened. Is that, is that a, a, a normal occurrence? Is it really just solo GMs or, you know, is there a world where, you know, there are a surprise guest and it's your mom and she's playing a pirate or, you know, like how did that... <laughs> my mom would what? totally do that. <laughs> my mom too. Let's start with Crystal. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I tend to see like guest NPCs a lot more in regular ongoing campaigns than like mm. something at an event. You have a friend visiting or somebody wants to try out the game and you have them take over a, a character for a night. Uh, but for co-GMing, I've had co-GMs before, like somebody who juggles the stat blocks for me or who is like my rules coach who will take care of looking up rulings and things like that while I like focus on keeping all the players engaged and keeping the story moving. Mm -hmm. So these are things that definitely exist and are super, super helpful at cons, but it's usually somebody you've got to know pretty well. Mm -hmm. True. Can you, uh, can you see my sidekick? We can, oh, yeah. but we can see his tail. Oh, tail. Mm -hmm. <gasps> cute. She's shy. Very cute. Aww. Yeah. Oh, baby. I think Crystal raises a, a really good point that a lot of, of new game masters may not know is that you, you, can, you can share a lot of the GM responsibilities uh, and you know, especially with your home group or a group of players you're, you're comfortable with, you know, you know it's, it's easy to parcel out a few things and have a player whose responsibility it is to look up you know, rules instances in the midst of play or to have mm -hmm. somebody whose job it is to manage certain, you know, monsters or NPCs or things like that, um, and you know, when you get, you know, to a really good position with your players, you can you can start doing interesting sort of scene management things where you're splitting the character, splitting the group up, and giving the players multiple roles, and saying, okay, your player characters are here in this scene. The players who aren't whose characters aren't in this scene, you're playing these NPCs you know, for this. Um, oh, and, it, and for superhero games, it's a great way to do those sort of team up stories mm -hmm. of, you know, having guest stars and, you know, like, you know, your hero group is teaming up with this hero group and we're going to split up and you're going to play multiple characters in different scenes. Um, okay. And I've, it takes I've a little- absolutely... oh, sorry. oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I've absolutely handed out like Aegis agent stat blocks to uh, right. players whose characters are off like, investigating the other scene and said okay you're these guys for the scene mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. fun that's a great way yeah. to put people on pause but keep them in the action that's uh, exactly that's yeah. really wise um the other thing i can imagine I just in my in my mind i see this this sort of parliamentarian with books stacked up above their head as they're searching for the rules <laughs> to sort of you know thwart and or prove you know mm -hmm. that that thing can be done well, um, yeah, hey, just you, because it, someone's character isn't involved doesn't mean their player doesn't have to be involved. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And if you've got a rules lawyer in your group, you know, harness their powers for good. Seriously, <laughs> you know, seriously. Yeah, yeah, you said that I had a, like a utilize their skills, full body reaction to a rules lawyer. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, yeah, occupy them with uh, with uh, good with good works. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I just want to make sure I wasn't talking over anybody. Um, we let's see. We have a question here. Um, somebody was talking about, "Hey, what is getting J boned?" Can I say that on? <laughs> <laughs> that's a um, that's an inside joke in the Freedom Verse. Wow, wow. Um, one of Tell our more. <laughs> one of our wonderful one of our, <laughs> one of our wonderful moderators is named J Bone, and um, he, let's just say that. In a previous life, he offended the dice gods, mm. uh, and and so he has uh, a uh, a glorious reputation for uh, glorious failure. Uh, in Sounds his like roles. epic failure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where we've I think we've devised a law of the universe because of J Bone that mm -hmm. the more epically and awesomely you describe what you're about to do before you roll, <laughs> the worse the worse the roll is going to be. 
and he's just like i hit him natural yes. 20 where if he tells us like for you know like a minute and a half how epic this attack is two <laughs> yeah. that's what the hero points are for that's what the hero well, exactly points are for. that is what the hero points are for yes. exactly i just okay, so that is trombone. that is getting j-boned <laughs> green ronin's own chris premis is somewhat similarly afflicted so <laughs> we, we i guess somebody's got to sort of absorb all those low dice rolls so i mean it's good that you've got sort of that uh that uh, low dice sponge um there uh Billy, I'm, I'm gonna start saying like jupiter yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to start saying, hey, uh, you been J-Bone today? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Um, oh, man. A question from you. That would you. make my day. Uh, this is actually a question for you, uh, Apuk, and I, I'm a couple really good ones, but this is uh, what moment from the Freedom Verse, because you have really created a canon and sort of a, you know, there's a thing going on here uh, that, that, you know, a contiguous uh, uh, set of stories and experiences. What moment from the freedom verse made you laugh the hardest oh made me laugh the hardest yeah yeah huh. oh man that's that's a that's a good that's a good question uh i think i think it would definitely have to be those j bone moments sort of collectively <laughs> because he's so good at at giving those epic descriptions like you could just picture it so beautifully the way he says it I thought the dice just punish him for his creativity over and over again. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a beautiful oh. thing to behold. He has but his own a... emote at this point. He has his own J Bone. Oh, really? Emote. He's got his own J Bone emote in the server now. You oh, know, so God. if the guy is going to be suffering from, you know, this is just his lot in life, you know, sure, celebrate it. <laughs> Give him a little something. Um, I love that. That's great. Uh, there's someone with a question about. Thinking um, uh, the stories and sort of the, the things that have unfolded, do you have a moment uh, that comes to mind as like the uh, the epic heroic act, uh, you know, something that happened that was just jaw dropping uh, as you, you know, as all these stories unfolded? Oh my, my there are so many wonderful and amazing uh, adventures and experiences that we've had. Um, let's see. I would have to say one of the most memorable moments for me at any rate was at the very end of um, a campaign that last ran for us um, and we're in uh, the phalanx campaign mm. where we're in at the, at the very end of that um, one of our, one of our fellow characters um, who was uh, a captain America XP um, gave up his life to uh join the energy field that his uh that uh the woman that he loved in the past had become part of mm -hmm. and uh so um even it wasn't something that he had to do to sacrifice for all of us to survive and we had defeated the the, the enemies and sort of the multi-dimensional beings that were in control of this energy field gave us all um sort of a wish that mm -hmm. we could we could, and that was what mm. his character's final wish was, and mm. so that's a Aww. that's a, a touching moment that still yeah. uh, that still resonates with me. Man, that's worth two hero points. Yeah, yeah seriously. Really? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I'm looking. You know, there there is so it, it's always interesting when we have people you know hanging out with us and doing our thing because you know we're goofy and we have fun, but it is it's so rewarding to kind of see the impact that you have on people and what you bring to like, you know, the, the questions are always about like, what are your fondest memory? What is the, you know, what is the epic experience? And it just, it really shows how much care and concern and, and curating and, and, uh, and building capacity in a group of people that um, that truly like you are making an impact. People want they want to know the lore of the space that they're a part mm -hmm. of. It, it is, it's their it's their you know uh, their history too, and I I, I love it. Um, there's a question here that's uh, you know um, uh, Rain has come. The questions here are phenomenal, Rain. I, um, I can clearly see you are uh, engaged and involved, and they're challenging as well. Like this one, for instance. Who's your favorite PC and uh, and PC of another player? Like, is there? Do you have like a one uh, like a you know some character that stands out 
this is going to start a fight. I know, right? I know, but I had to go there. Had, this is hard hitting, um, you know, questions. So hmm, that's that's a tough one. Um, there are lots of the people in our server has, have made some really memorable characters, mm. um, but there's one in particular I can think of. Um, her uh, she goes by the name of Rainbow. Oh, she's Rain one of our. Bo? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, she's uh, she's one of my uh, favorite characters because she's uh, she on the surface appears like a, like a vapid pop star as well as being a superhero but uh, deep down whenever she gets an opportunity you see her true colors come out as a true hero so I she, love it she's one of oh, those layered you. characters that's a lot of fun Thank you for that question, Raina Bower. Um, I really appreciate <laughs> that um, from you. And uh, did you want to, is there, um, do you want to, there was a kind of a two-part question, but it, you know, it sounds like that character is epic enough to take up this both slots. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good one. This is from um, uh, David. David says, any tips on how to let your well-crafted bad guy escape for future stories without being heavy-handed? My players seem to feel cheated if they get away. Well, I think that one of the key things to ask yourself about that is whether or not they need to get away at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, think as far as that, that goes, you know, I mean, it, you know, it, because it's comic books, you know, they can always break out of prison. <laughs> you know? True, yeah, yeah. I mean, Batman arrests the Joker pretty often. Right. Yeah, that's really, yeah. I mean, that guy keeps getting out. So don't worry, your David Man villain can sneak out and, you know, steal everybody's right sock yeah yeah then later on you can have an adventure where they have to go to the prison and fight like all their bad guys mm -hmm. yeah or they have to figure out well this crime fits exactly mr left socks modus operandi mm -hmm. but he's still in jail <laughs> he's in prison How's that can't, be, is can't possibly be guilty <laughs> right and then they go to the prison and they find out the guy in the cell is just a robot duplicate you know, no, an oh, animate wow. sock golem. Mm, you know, sock <laughs> golem. I've always, I've always he was said working, that uh, his volunteering in the laundry was suspicious. <laughs> I've always said that uh, that uh, Doctor Doom actually has the immortality dash, just another Doom bot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Power. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically. Uh, well, that's but, and that, by the way, is another way where your bad guy gets away. You know. Yeah, I mean, other other classics are like. Anytime you defeat them, they fall to their deaths into like the mists or mm -hmm. the roaring mm -hmm. sea or the building collapses and no, no one body, could no have survived that. Right. Uh, or, you know, it's really easy for a teleporter to escape or mm -hmm. things like that. But always yep. make sure when you do things like that, you reward your players somehow for mm -hmm. playing along with the genre tropes. So. At the end of yeah. the adventure, a hero point isn't necessarily the best reward, but like maybe an extra XP if it's like a big bad villain who escapes at the end of the day, or you know, mm -hmm. at the very least acknowledge that hey, your your willingness to play along with this trope means a lot to me, and I think it'll make the story better. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. Have an ice cream. I think <laughs> no matter what, you should not take the victory away from them that's yes the I, th yes. I think that's that's really key is let them let them have the victory even if the villain comes back whether they escape mm -hmm. or it was a doom bot or mm -hmm. you know whatever it is whether they die and download their consciousness into one of your friends you know whatever um don't take the victory away from them just because the villain will come back later yep Yep. I love it. That's that's good stuff. And this is um, this is why I love what we do when we kind of hang out and, and, and chat about this stuff, because I think that there are it just sort of, again, builds capacity and thought about you know how to tell a good story. And um, and I, I really I really enjoy that. And it's uh, it's trickier than you think. Um, it's a lot of work goes into this. And, and so it's really nice to be able to kind of sit with three pros and uh, and ask some questions. Um, I, I'm I we are uh we're a little over time um but uh, <laughs> uh Hi, troy we started late we did right? start late and and generally speaking i try to kind of keep us to an hour even including the tech time um but there's um, a couple questions you know I, I, owen thank you so much for sharing that stuff uh, um uh, owen is like the best 
participant in, in uh, the conversation and kind of help with the chat stuff. Um, let's see. Um, I, I wanted to, um, oh, this is good. So uh, Owen says, I also give a holdover hero points. Um, you all get one hero point mm -hmm. uh, to start in the next session and that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I love that reward loop kind of thing. And that sort of just enough tension to make it tense, but not so much that you're dead. Unless you my solution of giving everyone an otter pop. Who doesn't love an otter pop? Right. <laughs> I have not had an otter pop in so long. I, you know, yesterday I was going to, or last night rather, I was like, oh, I don't want to make anything. And I was going to have an ego <laughs> waffle that I found in my, my freezer. I, I don't remember Ooh. buying them, but I wasn't really paying mm -hmm. attention. Um, but it was um, a hamburger patty. <laughs> It was Is your freezer for a long okay? time. It was, no, it's not. Yeah. And I have not really, I mean, like there's a little hatch you open up at the bottom of your toaster that I didn't know about. And I am um, of an age where I should probably know that. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah. so that's, um, that's my treat. <laughs> job well done. Um, uh, grilled cheese, Troy. Frozen yeah. waffles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like basically a, a, a very crummy sort of not so cooked but sort of melted but then also burnt it was just it was just all the things it wow was, it was a, a smorgasbord if you will um, on the outside but frozen in the middle so it cancels <laughs> out exactly so i can still get botulism or whatever and uh, and have nothing delicious um mm, and botulism <laughs> delicious botulism mm. um apuk you are a just a, a an amazing, wonderful mm -hmm. delight of a human being. Um, really appreciate you taking time to hang out with us. Um, uh, we could do this for another three hours. Um, I am, uh, do we want to do like a quick, um, uh, uh, put a pook on the spot for a quick, um, uh, you know, super noise fight? Oh, um, I've been waiting for it. Bring Have it. you really? Because I, right. I can't. I'm excited. I'm kind of get all excited. So um, I'm going to ask you to pick. I make superheroes like all day long. So <laughs> nice. That's what I have I, an unfair advantage. I kind of picked. I picked um, He's been doping. <laughs> you've been <laughs> doping. I knew we should have tested you. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to decide um, what, which one it should be. I think I've picked it i think mm -hmm. um all right uh but so here's the thing as we as this game evolves um and we become more um prone to uh torturing our guests you need to make the noise um and, and uh. that, in the way that you make it um of course you know should uh should sort of inform um the nature of this particular uh, and for those of you who are, you know, like, what's soup? What's your super noise fight? Well, we give you a weird noise with, you know, like this is this classic sort of fight. They're in a battle and the uh, and our guest has to figure out or it's basically create that character um, out of whole cloth. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make this noise. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awkward choice of coloring there, Troy. Right? Or, 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 Really? Yeah, what do you mean? So, um, let's <laughs> see. That looks like an exceedingly liquid noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, something, something a deep one might do as it slides itself greasily out of the ocean. Um, and uh, I guess the noise as it slides among the, to the tide pools would be warm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, what what does it do? What like what What's are it? The villain. Yeah. Right. Oh well. Uh, yes. The the actually. Let's see. To actually put it in the superhero context, I think our Glort villain would definitely have to be a uh, an amorphous shapeshifter, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. any and any time they slap themselves into a new body or collapse back onto the ground, they go Glort. Yep. I like it. One, I like one it. of those one of those characters whose sound effect could easily be their name. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'm Blort. <laughs> Have you seen the? There's a an animated series for Big Hero Six. That big, uh, the oh, the yeah, computer yeah. animated Disney movie from mm -hmm. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. There's an animated series with a villain called Blobby, who is basically exactly what you've just described. 
Glort. 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 <laughs> I love it. Uh, you know, uh, I've been watching folks, you know, normally when we play, um, you know, some great names and some great ideas come out, but I think you just really nailed it. I think yeah. that you, you glorted them. Um, they are, they're, they're truly glorted. Uh, you really glorted this, Apu. Congratulations. Right. Thank you. Glortastic, in fact. Good glorting, sir. Um, my friend, a true pleasure. Um, a delight. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's been hanging out in the channel. We've got lots of good things coming uh, down the pike, as it were. Um, one of those things is, and share this with your crankier friends who are like, man, that beta, blah, uh, because we are going to resurrect the data from the mm. forums. Yeah. We're not bringing them back. They're not coming back. They need to not mm. come back in a way that can be interacted with, but to read and to remember, of course. And so we're working okay. on that right now. You yes. won't be left out in the cold, um, but it is one of those projects that we will do as we get time and as we get some um, energy and the lot going on, but this is important to us and we know it's important to you. So do me a favor again, share when your friends like, Oh, those green Ronan, they don't like me. Um, that is probably true, but we'll do this for them in the and <laughs> effort to build friendships. And, uh, and also it, there's a ton of stuff in there that, that I think uh, for all of us is just really important, really good. Um, lots of stories, lots of characters, lots of, uh, lots of very uh, mutants and masterminds, plus all the other um, lines that were, you know, all the other uh, titles. So we're doing it, I promise. Um, yes, some of my favorite mm -hmm. third edition games were on those forums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot of data there. Yeah. And good, good stuff. And so we'll make it, you know, we're going to, and I'm working with, uh, uh, I, I kind of set up shop at um, uh, working with some community folks who are really passionate about this. And, um, and so, yeah, so don't fret, never fear. Um, we will, we will get them. My only concern really, honestly, is I, I would be the one to unleash the uh, the virus that would then take out the internet, um, you know, our sole source of uh, of social, uh, uh, like being able to make friends and talk to people and then also make money. And so like, I just, you know, I want to be a little ginger about that. Not so, not so rash. Um, uh, Crystal, Steve, do you have anything you'd like to share? Uh, just the usual real heroes mm -hmm. wear masks to protect not themselves, but the ones they love. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And Definitely. on that note, uh, Apu, do you have any final words you'd like to share with anybody? Um, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, I, uh, wise words or a fun joke or, you know, maybe a compliment for me or something, anything, really, honestly. I mean, did, I mean don't think about it too hard. Um, <laughs> I guess I, I, I would just say uh, that um, I hope, you know, in the in the future that everyone is able to find a way to be the center of their own heroic story nice and on that note friends we are going to go because we've got some heroism to do indeed thank you thank you both um you're like me who what <laughs> uh sorry yeah, yeah, I, i'm not going to take that joke anywhere i'm going to say i'm not allowed to punch trains anymore <laughs> no <laughs> you're not yeah but sometimes heroism is just putting on a mask <laughs> crystal thank you so much steve thank you so much a poop always a pleasure look forward to we've got a lot of great things coming uh in the uh in the coming weeks really uh, lots of events lots of uh online conventions so if you're interested in that kind of stuff do send an email to let's play at greenrona.com and so we can all get together and have some fun it'll be a good time and with that i say goodbye bye, all. bye. bye. good night everyone <laughs>